Well, here we are live in the room. And uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my microphone still is saying it's too hot. I hope I'm, I'm turning it down and turning it down. But uh, anyway, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We are in. Uh, welcome into the room. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where you are in YouTube world. And uh, welcome to Arlene, who's joined me here. And we're having some serious fun with technical challenges. And uh, I've discovered there are certain things I can do and certain things I can't. Uh, but I'm learning on the way. I'm taking a course again. I'm reviewing it to make sure I'm learning how to do this to make a nice uh, thing for you guys to look at. You can see uh, my lovely back room here. <laughs> this is where I really hang out. Anyway, so we are currently in week 18. We're beginning... Uh, day one, we are on page 145, and just as a beginning, I'd like to read what it says in the text. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Week 18. The goodness of God is described as an everlasting loving kindness. Loving kindness points to covenant love. Love God gives for the benefit of the recipient. Everlasting makes this love steadfast. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I know a lot of people in the world who are searching and searching for a steadfast love, but they're refusing the God who gives it. So let's not be like that. And we are starting today in, oops, sorry for all the noise, Psalm 105. It is a double day today. So we are going to be looking at Psalm 105 for two days. Um, and... Uh, <coughs> You know what, Arlene, I think you and I will read um, segment by segment. We seem to have one, two, three, four, five segments in this psalm. So you can start and end, and I'll take the ones in the beginning. Do you, does your uh, copy have marked where, um, where the segments are? No. Okay. So uh, maybe, have you got a pencil? Handy. Um, I can do it on okay. my device. Yes, oh good. So what from one, you... 1 to 7, Okay. and then 8 to 15. Just a minute. Thanks for your patience out there in YouTube world. This is live. Go ahead. And uh, 16 to 24. Okay. 25 to 36. Okay. And 37 to the end. All right. I haven't got the best lighting situation here for reading, but when it gets to my part, I'll try my best. Before we do, let's start in prayer. Oh, Lord, thank you for the new week that you have given us to come to you, to see your works, to hear your voice, to know you better and to hear what you really think of us and the instructions you give to us for living. And we're grateful, Lord. We're grateful for all the gifts that you've given to us, the gift of breath, our heartbeats, the gift of companionship, whatever that may uh, be. And um, for some of us, it's pets, and for some of us, it's, it's human beings and, and friends and loved ones. And Father, though you have given yourself and you came in the form of a human, you were born, you lived, you taught, you suffered for us and died on the cross, but you didn't stay dead. Oh no, you were buried, but you rose again three days later. And then you showed yourself to many witnesses so that we could be, have confidence and to know that you are who you are and who say you who you say you are and so father god we just thank you for all of these things thank you for the precious gift of our salvation and for our redemption and lord god i just uh, ask that you bless those who listen who study along and uh, bring encouragement and enlightenment into our hearts in jesus i pray amen all right psalm 105 you get to start okay <clears throat> Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make his deeds known among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonders, boast in his holy name. 
May the heart of those who seek the Lord be joyful. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his wonders which he has done, his marvels and the judgments spoken by his mouth. You descendants of Abraham, his servant, you sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham, and his oath to Isaac, sorry, my eyes. Then he confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion of your inheritance, when they were only a few men in number, very few, and strangers in it. And they wandered about from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. He permitted no man to oppress them, and he reproved kings for their sakes. Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. And he called for a famine upon the land. He broke the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They forced his feet into shackles. He was put in irons. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord refined him. The king sent and released him, the ruler of peoples, and set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler over all his possessions, to imprison his high officials at will, that he might teach his elders wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, so Jacob lived in the land of Ham, and he made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his wondrous acts among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they did not rebel against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their lambs, land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came a swarm of flies and gnats in all their territory. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He struck down their vines also and their fig trees and shattered the trees of their territory. He spoke, and locusts came, and young lo locusts, even without number, and ate up all vegetation in their land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He also struck down all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of all their vigor. Then he brought the Israelites out with silver and gold, <clears throat> and among his tribes there was not one who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the dread of them had fallen upon the Egyptians. He spread out a cloud as a covering, and fire to illumine by night. They asked, and he brought quail, and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and water flowed out. It ran in the dry places like a river, for he remembered his holy word with his servant Abraham, and he led out his people with joy, his chosen ones with a joyful shout. He also gave them the lands of the nations, so that they might take possession of the fruit of the people's labor, and that they might keep his statutes and comply with his laws. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And hey, the doorbell just rang. And Liz is here joining us. So I'm going to change cameras over here. Sorry, you people. I'm going to do it right in front of you. And I'm going to say, welcome to Liz. There she is. Now I set your camera up funny. And I'm sorry, I, oh, I can do it. I can do it. I've been told I can do this. Um, but I'm not quite sure how. <laughs> oh, and I have to make it so you can be heard too. Uh, well, I think you can be heard, but I think you're muted yourself. So Liz, you can unmute yourself. And there's supposed to be a way I can do this, but I haven't really learned how to do it on the fly. So I'm sorry. There you are, small compared to us. I can do so. I can. Sh you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah. You can hear us. Okay, good. All right. Oh, you can't talk? 
Are you sick? Oh, have I got your, have I, well, just a minute here. Oh, I've got your volume up, so is it, okay. It has to do with you being muted. Unmute yourself. Good morning, Liz, and good morning to Harleen. We just read through Psalm 105 together between us, and uh, I got to get that out of the way. All right, so, so I'm talking to myself because I, I'm not a tech person, and doing this tech stuff on the fly is just very frustrating. <laughs> okay, I'm going to fix that camera later. All right, um, oh. It's in here where I fix it. Liz, that's where I do it. That's what I've done. Ah, that's better. There you are. There you are. Are you are you speaking to us yet? No. Okay. All right. So, um, I'm not quite sure. This is a two two day psalm, and this is just the beginning of it. So why don't we go through um, again from the top? And um, mark the keywords. Okay, so now uh, Adrian and I were discussing the last time we were together in the room that we hadn't been marking thanks and thanksgiving. Um, and I'm not quite sure how I want to do that in my own personal thing because I don't think I've marked it at all yet. I came to my desk totally disorganized this morning. I was up a little bit late learning some things on this program and I got all mixed up. Okay, never mind. You guys don't need to know about that. All right, so, oh, give thanks to the Lord. And do what? Call, call upon his name. Mm -hmm. So we are marking call as it is prayer. So I don't know how you've been doing that, but we've, we've been marking it, um, I've been marking it with a cloud, and I have a particular color for the cloud, but that's my own little uh, system that I devised. Okay, yes, upon his name, and that's something I always mark, because that has been my lifelong curiosity, his name. And as we read through the Psalms, and I, oh, there's all my pens, I should have known better, because um, the psalm talks about who God is. Psalms, uh, you know, they tell what he has done and who his character is. Um, but yeah, as I've said before, if you want to do a little bit more in-depth study, and I'm sure it's not a definitive study, but Precept also has a study called Lord, I Want to Know You. And that's a wonderful study on the names of God. And uh, it helps make understanding come. Okay, make no okay, oh give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known what his deeds where among the peoples. So I'm not going to mark those particularly. I'm just asking the the questions, the in interrogative uh, questions we ask. Who, what, where, when, why, how? Okay, what are we to do now? What are we to do? Verse 2. We are to sing to him. Sing praises to him. Now there's, oh, lots of singing going on here. And speak of all his wonders. Well, um, that's very interesting because we that he says that in that way because what we did was we um, we just read through the entire song and what does it talk about in this psalm, Arlene, as we read through? Um, um, the story of Jacob. Mm-hmm. Abraham and Isaac. And the release from Egypt. Mm-hmm. Very detailed. We're going to get into that as we move down the psalm, but yeah. 
So at the outset of this psalm, he's saying, tell of all his wonders, and then he does. Okay, uh, verse 3, glory in his holy name. Okay, I was starting to mark glory. Uh, you you read a different word for that. What was it in your text in verse 3? Um, yeah, boast in his holy name. Okay, boast. Good. That's uh, that's a good translation too because um, it might be, we might have the question, what does it mean to glory in someone's name? But if you're saying boast, and actually in my text, oh, let's, it says boast, yes. Okay. Uh, in the sidebar. The Hebrew original, uh-huh. the Hebrew is halal. Oh, okay. H A from Hallel, from where we get Hallelujah, hallelujah. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now, uh, okay. Let the uh, glory or boast in His holy name. Let the and I marked heart. I always mark heart of who those who seek Him. Yes. Be glad. Oh, yes. Your, yours read just slightly different. Let the heart of those who seek the uh, Lord rejoice or be something? Be joyful. Be joyful. Be joyful, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Yours says be led. Be glad. Oh, be glad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you know what? I started marking verbs as we went along uh, uh, in, in terms of... Um, Oh, what is it? Not, I don't want to say command. What is it? Imperative. That's the word. That's the... Yeah. yeah. So I mark the imperatives. So um, uh, just think about that as we're going, and we'll go back and look at them. Okay, so verse 4 says... Seek the Lord and his strength. And his strength. Go ahead. Seek his face continually. Oh, continually. So that's a time thing. We make note of that. I was thinking about that this morning, you know, when I woke up and I thought, oh, Lord, did I really talk to you much yesterday? Was I really talking to you very much? Because it says, pray without ceasing. (laughs) And that pulls you up short sometimes, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Thankfully, he knows our frame that we are but dust. (laughs) And that we're frail. Seek his face continually. What else? Verse uh, 5. Remember his wonders which he has done. Okay, now wonders. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, That's the second time we've seen the word wonders. Ah, I might mark that. Because it's twice. And I don't know. I'm just going to do it so that it sticks out to me his wonders and the wonders which he has done okay uh, the next part of that verse Um, his marvels and the judgments spoken by his mouth yes okay so um i started after a while when i was uh, first going through you know when i had been going through the Psalms for a while to uh, start marking things like that come from the Lord's mouth like I mark the Word of God because that's the Word of God so uh, um, so his mouth so um, I'm going to mark that and the way I do it is I make it like an open book and the easy way to make that little symbol for myself is to make a seagull over top and a seagull over the bottom and join all the points together and then it looks like an, a folded open book okay so the judgment so I also marked that okay I marked that the last time I went through like I marked judgment but what are we really talking about the, his marvels and the judgments uttered by his mouth oh Liz you're still muted so okay so um, say it with a good lip read I didn't see it. Sorry. <laughs> Are you getting? Oh, 
Okay, so there was another thing I wanted to discuss with you guys off camera before we or before we leave today about what we see and how we do this better. I just I'm I'm not hearing you, Liz, and I can't do that. What, uh, um, Arlene, jump in there and yeah. judgments. What What's are you thinking? Well, I oh. when I was marking his marvels and the judgments, I marked it like judgment. I have a special marking for justice and judgment and judge. Okay. But but I have an idea that it might be have a different meaning. You've got the uh, Hebrew up there, have you? Yeah, Miss Pat. I'm not familiar with that. Okay, what so. what does it say for the definition of that? Okay. Um, Sorry about that, Liz. Miss Pat. Judgment, justice, ordinance, uh, act of deciding a case. Okay, so it is judgments. Place court. Yeah. yeah, okay, Execution okay. Execution of judgment. Yeah. Okay, so what I was thinking, ordinance. his marvels and the judgments uttered by his mouth. Because I was thinking, okay, so justice has to do with his law. And I was thinking about law, you know, God's law, okay, yeah. uh, as it relates to his word that has been revealed to us. Um, but you're saying that judgments is a better one. Okay, good. Uh, verse 6. Mm -hmm. O oh, seed of Abraham, who is Abraham? His servant. Mm -hmm. O oh, sons of Jacob, and who is Jacob? His chosen ones. Okay, now, hmm. Uh, we are studying concurrently in First Peter, and so chosen is one of the words that is our key word there. So my tendency is to go back here in the Psalms and mark the word chosen the same way as I have marked it in the New Testament. Mm. And I have to remember how that is without flipping through my Bible chosen. Well, I'm just going to do that because I know that that's what that means. His chosen ones. Okay. So, uh, uh, verse seven. He is he, the Lord our God. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, uh, when when we were studying, uh, Lord, I want to know you, and we understood, you know, the different appellations that were used, the Lord, our God. So we see Lord is in all caps and our God. Have you got the Hebrew there? And then we can know what um, the name is. Yeah. Uh, Lord is Yehovah. Our God is Elohim. Okay, that's what I thought. Jehovah Elohim. So Elohim is uh, who is signified. That's the first name that's revealed, which is Creator. In the mm -hmm. beginning, Elohim, which is a, a singular person with a plural ending, which was a delightful discovery. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay, He is the Lord our God. All right. Um, what else do we learn? His. Judgments. Okay, so that's the judgment is twice there already, are in all the earth. Uh, all the earth. I've said this before. When the Bible says all, it doesn't just mean uh, like what we think of all. I'm going to collect all the pennies in the world and I'm going to be rich. No. When there's a superlative or the nth degree of something as referred to with God, that means all the earth. This has a little significant idea. So remember, historically, Psalms, around the time of David, thereabouts, right? Uh, a little after, too, probably. Um, what does that say about his judgments? Is it just for the chosen? No. No, no. It's all the earth. His judgments are in all the earth. Everyone is accountable. Right? That's what... Mm -hmm. I'm going to just do something here a little bit. All right. Yeah. His judgments are in all the earth. Good. Okay. So let's go back here because I wanted to look at the imperatives. So uh, the first imperative that we see here is in in this segment. Mm-hmm. In the second... Mm, call upon him. Mm-hmm. And the third. Make his deeds known. Mm-hmm. 
and the fourth. Sing. Mm-hmm. And the next one. Sing again. Mm-hmm. And tell of all his wonders. Mm-hmm. And the other one is that kind of double meaning in verse 3 that we looked at a bit. Uh, glory or boast. Mm-hmm. Hello. Mm-hmm. And, and rejoice. Mm-hmm. The next one. Uh, seek. Mm-hmm. Twice. Mm-hmm. And then remember. Mm-hmm. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. So we've got some imperatives there. Um, and then uh, specifics uh, for those who are to do that, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Now, this brings up a beautiful thing because uh, we, okay. We were studying... What book? And it was talking about referring to seed. And it wasn't many seeds, but one seed. And that was of Abraham. But where was that? Was that in Hebrews? Or was that in? Anyway, so that's a curiosity. Uh, you look up the word seed, and it's in the New Testament. And it was, I'm pretty sure it was either. Might have been Romans, because it's as it, the 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 person who is writing the epistle says, um, it refers to seed, not seeds, and that is Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that here, but let's just say <laughs> um, that just brought that up in my mind. O seed of Abraham, his servant. O oh, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. We did see that uh, those who are in Christ, who have believed on his name and who are saved and have come into the kingdom are part of the covenant to Abraham. In you shall all the nations of the world be blessed and uh, that uh, from your seed that that we Gentiles are, are part of that covenant that was promised to to Abraham, O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. So that's referring to Israel, of course. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in, are all in all the earth. So that's referring to both Jew and Gentile. Okay, very good. If we were going to title this segment, Well, I said the word imperative, so I'm just going to put that in there. Pencil. I'm using pencil so I can change it later. Um, imperative, imperative for who is it for? Those who, what does it say? Is there anything here in fear his name or it's just seek his name? Seek the Lord. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Uh, now, so I'm going to say... Uh, I'm just writing this. And the reason we uh, we just mark these down is some Bibles already give us little titles like that for the segments, which takes all the fun out of discovery. <laughs> but um, when we make the titles, they're not for academic purposes. It's so that we can remember how to find what we found or we have it summarized for ourselves. So... Can you hear me scribbling in this microphone? It's very close. Okay, imperatives for believers. Okay. I just noticed in verse 4, mm -hmm. seek the Lord and his strength and seek his face continually. I just uh, noticed how intimate that is, that we're, just, we're to want to see him face to face. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and we're to seek him and his strength because he wants us to call upon his strength and not rely on our own little puny human strength exactly and to what was getting to me this time as we read through there's nothing passive about this either it's not mm -hmm. it, at the very beginning it it's talking about sing well that 
requires outward expression. Mm -hmm. And you don't go into a closet and sing. Well, unless you're recording. <laughs> but and and speaking of his wonders means that you're you're telling other people. You're telling other people what the Lord has done. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that means there is nothing private about your faith, as some people have in the last half century tried to tell people. You know, uh, your, your faith is a private matter. Well, that's not what God says. That's not what the Word right. says. It says, sing about it. Speak out. Tell mm -hmm. about about what God has done. How else will people know unless you tell? Right. Okay, very good. All right, so let's look at to the next paragraph. I think we'll probably get through the three. Because it seems to me on my page, there are three, th three well, three segments mostly on two one page and then two segments on the last one. So that's how we'll deal with this. Okay, uh, so he... Um, and that's God. And then we have been marking, Adrian and I, has remembered because there was a whole segment or a whole chapter that had to do with remembrance. And so we have been marking remembered. So God has remembered what? His covenant. Covenant, yes. Yeah, so we're always marking covenant now. And I see that when I went through before, I marked it differently, so I couldn't even actually read what it said. I better be careful. Okay, he remembers his covenant how long? Forever. Forever. There's my infinity sign. Okay, and what else? Uh, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Okay, so now, hmm. Okay, so is that word referring to, um, you know, like the word of God, or is that referring to the covenant? I'm not sure. Hmm. Well, I'm just marking it. I marked it as my marking of the word, okay. which he commanded to who? A thousand generations. Okay, now, is that a, is, you have a better translation? Is that what you said? Uh, no, I was looking at Liz, trying to lip read. Liz? Oh. <laughs> I see best. Sorry, Liz, that's, I, I, I'm not at all good at lip reading. <laughs> Doesn't she have a chat window? Mm-hmm. Oh, in chat. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just go and... S oh, so where are you chatting, though? Sorry about that out there in YouTube land. Where are you chatting? Are you chatting on the Facebook Messenger? Or are you chatting in... Because I've never chatted in this before. Good grief. Never done There's it. There's a little window. Okay, so there's Liz's little window. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. I am in the green room. My screen says I'm not in the show. Okay, yeah, yeah. You weren't in the show because we were reading. Sorry. <laughs> to answer that question, Liz. So that's an interview chat. Okay, there's Arlene wrote a test. Okay, so here we're learning ECAM as we go. Uh, you are in the chat. I don't even know who that is. Okay. You typing something else in there, Liz? Oh dear. I take the camera off so I have less junk on my desktop here to look at. Because I'm getting confused by all the stuff I'm looking at on my screen. That never happens to anybody else, right? You don't ever have your screen so full of stuff that you can't see what you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's you guys there. And interview chat. You're still not in the show. Yes, you are. 
you are in the show. What? Okay, so let me explain something. Okay, sorry, we're just taking a little segue. Uh, I forgot to tell you girls that the best uh, browser for you to sign in on is Chrome. So if you're on a different browser, you're not going to see everything that is being seen. So um, are you muted in that browser window that you're looking at, Liz? Okay, so all right. If you if you type in the chat wherever you were, we can I can see it. The audience can't see it unless I show them. But I'm not going to. So they. Yes. Okay. So there you are. Yeah. Okay. I've got that chat open now, and you can type whatever you want and respond however you want, Liz. And we'll get that other part sorted out uh, after the show or before the next one. I forgot to mention that to you guys. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, can't these glasses. Okay. So the muted symbol is showing on your face. Yeah. And uh, depending on, on what browser, see, you're probably using Safari. Are you using Safari? Yeah, that's not the one to use. Um, I was using, uh, sorry, this is technical again. I was using Brave browser when I was being in an interview and that doesn't have as many options either. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I see the muted thing here, but I can't unmute you because I have a slider, but I can't unmute you. Sorry. Okay, let's get back to what we were doing because I'm losing focus here. All right, so uh, verse 8. Uh, a thousand generations. Commanded to a thousand generations. Um, is that a rhetorical thing, do you think? Like, you know, like... Um, oh, gosh, how did I do that? I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Ugh, I don't know how to get out of this now. Option. I don't know how I did that. Anyway, neither here nor there. Um, you know how uh, I will love you for a hundred. Metaphorical? Yeah, metaphorical, do you think? Where he says a thousand, he is commanded to a thousand generations. I'm just looking. There's a little note here. Verse 8b. Oh, it's referring to some other Psalms. But, it, you know, uh, the, the covenant was to children's children and all of that. So, all right. The word to a thousand. Eight. Okay, so uh, verse 9 continues on with the thought. The covenant with the covenant. And there's that word which he, the Lord, made with Abraham and his God's. What does that say? Oh, my goodness. Oath. Is that an oath? Yes, his oath yeah. to Isaac. I colored it in too dark. <laughs> I'm going to change that. Okay. Now there's a time word and then, and it says then. So then is a time word, which we mark with a little clock. At least I do. Then he, God, confirmed it, the covenant, to Jacob for a statute. Okay, now a statute is something different. I, I tend to mark that like I marked the word law. Because we were talking earlier in an earlier psalm about the Lord's statutes, his commands, his law, his ordinances. And I just marked them the same. And, and who is it to? Israel. For how long? Everlasting. Yes. So anybody coming after uh, so anybody in our time or coming after us who says otherwise doesn't know what God said. Because God confirmed that to Jacob for a statute and to Israel as an everlasting covenant. Well, we know that uh, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. And then Israel had sons. And they're called the sons of Israel and the tribes of Israel. As an everlasting, and there's covenant. Okay, so what did God say? To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion of your inheritance. Okay, to you. So I'm marking that as Israel. And the I, of course, speaking, is the Lord. Uh, and uh, 
we mark geographical locations. Uh, I usually double underline them in green. So the land of Cain, and that's what God set. And it was as the portion of your, and that's Israel, inheritance. I mark inheritance with dollar signs. I know it's not just dollars, but that's what I do. An inheritance. And uh, when did he do that? When they First. were only a few people in number. Mm hmm Very and few. And strangers in it. Yes, they they because God brought them there. They were strangers, aliens. And that's reminding me of our study in First Peter again now. We are strangers and aliens in this land. This world is not our home. <clears throat> we have an eternal inheritance which is reserved in heaven for us, which will not spoil or fade. That's a wonderful thing. All right. So this, this, this is telling us of the history. You know, when, when the sons of Israel, the sons of Jacob, were, they weren't, um, they hadn't had a lot of babies and grandchildren and great-grandchildren yet. Um, God promised it to them even then. Okay. Um, and what happened then? Verse 13. And they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. Okay, so nation to nations. When, so because um, uh, the covenant, it has to do with covenant, then you have Israel, you have uh, Jacob and I Isaac and Abraham, covenant. And then when it talks about nation to nation, we're talking about Gentile nations. So I'm going to find my Gentile color. And mark that in. Yeah, because the Hebrew word for nation is goy. Okay. So that's from goy to goy? Mm hmm Okay. And then one kingdom to another people. What is the word for people? Uh, At the... Uh, people is am. Okay. So I'm I'm marking that all the, sa all the same. So those kingdoms... Yeah. And uh, all of that. I'm marking that as if it's Gentile. All right, what else? 14. Mm -hmm. He allowed no one to oppress them. Okay. And he rebuked kings for their sake. Okay. Uh, I'm going to mark oppress in the way that I mark that kind of oppress, distress, uh, that oppress. And he reproved kings for their sakes. And when you, uh, when you do the survey, the history, you know, the, from the beginning through the Genesis, Exodus, and Kings and Chronicles, uh, you see this, how the Lord reproves kings. And what does he say? Um, do not touch my anointed ones, and do not harm my prophets. Mm -hmm. So, my anointed ones, I'm not sure how. Okay, I can mark that as cho chosen. I can, I can do that, and I will... No. I do it with a check mark. <laughs> my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. The hmm. um the anointed though is a different word than the elect and chosen. Okay. So the Hebrew is Meshaya. Aha. Aha! So good. Who is that? It's, well, it's not capitalized. I'm. Not, you. You think it's Jesus? That says Messiah. So uh, well, okay. So in my sidebar from a for, from a earlier study, I wrote something Greek. It and the Greek I had. Okay, I'm going to mispronounce this because I'm going to so sound something wrong. But anyway. What I have written down in my text is hoi Christoi 
Theoi, Theu. I, I think it's referring to the people of the Messiah. Yes. Not the Messiah himself. Yes. Okay. So, the people of the Messiah. Okay, let's think about that term for a minute. <clears throat> because from Genesis chapter 3, is it? Um, the Lord promised a Redeemer. And so, right from the beginning, from the very beginning of history, and then, so people then were looking forward to the Messiah. And then Messiah came, but the people did not know him when he came. But other people believed because of the testimony of the disciples and the apostles as to who he, he was, Jesus. And so, so, all right, so this is the precious nugget that I'm trying to get to. If, if, as you say, what is referred to in the Hebrew there. Mashiach. Yes. Is he for anointed? Yes. Do not touch my anointed Mashiach. ones and do my prophets no harm. Who is that? That the Lord is warning not to touch. All his people. Me! You! Us! <laughs> all the believers. All the believers. Because, okay, back in the beginning, those who, okay, where is it? Those who seek the Lord. I'm going to mark that like I marked anointed ones. I'm going back there. Those who seek the Lord. So that's a precious nugget for taking away today. So it really helps when we have these study tools. doesn't mean we have to know Greek or Hebrew. It just means we have to know how to use the tools that have already been developed for us to make it accessible to us. That's good. Thank you. I'm glad you've got that uh, that version up today. Okay, so that, okay, so we're talking and now let's um, let's um, summarize this section hmm. I'm writing down God remembers his covenants um and protects his anointed. I'm just going to say anointed because I just pulled that one out of the text. Okay, that's a good one for me. Have you got a better one? If you got a better one, I'll take it. This used to be my horror horror time. I didn't lot. I hated summarizing things like that because, you know, it's like. Sometimes you feel like you're eating a whole elephant and you're taking great God bites of elephant and um, learning God's word and taking it in and puzzling it out. And, and uh, you know, God is washing your mind of false things that you've thought or believed, but he's also giving you um, basically challenges to live things out. And sometimes it's a huge elephant to eat. So for me, the hard thing to do was to summarize or to um, or to put titles, you know, that, that just killed me. So being able to do this now is a, a sign of 30 years of progress. <laughs> okay, so let's look at the last segment. What time have we got here? I don't want to be too long in here while we're, you know, in. Uh, oh, it's 1030. We've been about an hour. Um, why don't we... That's going to make it too long, though. Let's continue on. Let's just go continue on. So, uh, verse 16. Oh, yes, okay. So, this is a, begins the list. So, uh, what was the first thing he did? Called for a famine. Yep, so I'm going to put number one, because I'm not going to bother with the list. I'm just going to put number one. And what, and, oh, and in the famine, what what did he do? Broke a whole staff of bread. Mm -hmm. 
And now the next person mentioned, he said, he, that's God, sent a man before them. And who was it? Joseph. Okay, so I'm going to put in the sidebar. So Joseph and famine. So if we want to go back and read the history of that, we can. And what happened to Joseph? He was sold for a servant. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, number two. So the first thing was the famine, and two, beforehand, he sent a man before them, beforehand, uh, who was Joseph. Okay, and what happened to Joseph? He was sold mm -hmm. as a slave. They forced his feet into shackles. Mm -hmm. He was put in irons. Mm -hmm. So I'm not putting those as part of the list of what God did, because that's what happened to Joseph. So there was right. Joseph and the family. Okay. And then. Until aha. The time yes. That his word came to pass. Okay. So there's a time thing. And I'm putting that in the margin of my Bible. Time. Until the time that his word. And whose word are we talking about? I don't know. Oh, I do. Yes. Because it's. With his dream. Mm-hmm. Dream visions. Mm-hmm. So we. Uh, I'm going to mark it as God's word because Joseph. it but it came through Joseph dream as a dream right yes uh, his word came to pass okay never mind oh yes and then it says the word of the Lord and what mm -hmm. did what was that that the word of the Lord did refined him mm -hmm. so refining and testing all of that okay then the what happened the king sent and released him. Mm hmm The rulers of people set him free. Mm hmm And made him lord of his house. Mm hmm And ruler over all his possessions. Mm hmm And how far did that authority go? Uh, to imprison high officials at will. Mm-hmm. And that he might teach the elders wisdom. Ah, so that that's God gave special insight and wisdom to Joseph, who was taken captive and enslaved and then brought into um, the king's uh, palace so that he might teach his elders wisdom. Hmm. I've been marking things like wisdom, so I'm going to mark that and teach. I've been marking that, too. If you it's go God through the given wisdom, yes, it's exactly. Really mm -hmm. That they recognize that. Mm -hmm. And so here we're back with Israel because who is Israel in relation to Joseph? Uh, his father. Mm -hmm. So Israel also came into Egypt, thus. Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And then what did God do? Uh, he made his people very fruitful. Okay, made where them did stronger he, than their enemies. Good. Okay, so that's uh, in the list of things God did. I think maybe I'm going to call this um, number three three and four maybe I don't know it's a moot point really um, he causes people and I'm marking that as Israel to be very fruitful and made them stronger than there and I'm we're always marking enemies and adversaries very good okay so how we okay so I actually uh, I just marked uh, Joseph famine um, because that will bring to mind what else, you know, about the story that is in there. Well, I think we've done a good, good day's work today, girls. <laughs> and, uh, I'm really appreciative of you being in the class and, um, we can remember to play, pray for those who are absent, whether, uh, it's by illness or because they're in a class taking a course and, and, uh, anyway, uh, I would ask Liz to pray, but she hasn't got a mic on. 
one. <laughs> so I will close in prayer and then we'll say, uh, if you girls stay in the room afterwards, I can close the program and we can still chat a bit. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this reminder, the reminder of those who seek you, the excitement about your covenant that you remember forever and that it includes us and that your protective hand is over those who seek your face and who are a part of your anointed ones and that you are keeping all of that in mind. That gives us such hope, Lord, in the days that we live in and the struggles that we see happening around the world that you are ever watchful over your anointed ones regardless of what we may come into our eyes and ears we hold fast to this truth because you are a covenant keeping God thank you for the reminder in history of Joseph how you were the one who called for the famine and how you uh permitted all of this to happen to Joseph so that you would preserve your people alive and thrive. Sometimes when they're in the, we're in the middle of stuff, Lord, we can't see that. Well, most of the time we can't see what's going on and it causes us dismay. But Father God, you use that to test Joseph and to try his faith and uh, to purify him. And we know also, Lord, that you are continuing that process in us and we're grateful. Even though we don't like suffering, we don't like grief, we don't like pain, we don't like loss, we don't. We don't like any of it. It doesn't feel good, Lord, but we do know that we can hold fast to you because you have a purpose in it all. And that purpose is never to crush us, but to refine us. And um, help us to trust your refining fire, whatever it is that's coming up upon us. And I pray that you would strengthen us with your strength, as it says, so that we can continue to make known your deeds to all of our, anybody who will listen to us. And that you, we will sing praise and, and we will boast in your glorious and marvelous name. Thank you, Lord, for this time together continue uh, our continue um, causing us to hunger and thirst after your word that we might grow up into all things in Christ Jesus in whose name we pray amen amen all right my friends out there in YouTube world I'm going to sign off and say adieu to you and the ladies will still be here and we'll have a little chat so we'll see you in the next time we'll continue on Psalm 105 bye for now